<laughs> Saturday, this Saturday, Healing Place is out on the streets. We are in Palace Avenue Gardens from 10.30. So if you want to come down, we're going to uh, we'll do some worship. We're doing, obviously, some healing as well <laughs> and being out on the streets. Um, so if you want to come down and be a part of that, that would be great. And we'll see, see what God's going to do. It's going to be... I have no idea, actually. <laughs> to put it quite honest, I have no idea what's going to happen. So um, I just know God's going to be there. And he's going to do some great stuff. So, And it's great to be out in the streets. I love it. So um, yesterday, just... Um, so the last four weeks, we've had um, a person who's been... It's a healing place. Thing, a person who's come before. It's had quite a few issues and stuff like that and she's actually been to church and stuff like that so she was here yesterday we prayed for her that was great she's steadily coming freer and freer in Christ Jesus but the great thing this is the, this is the story this is the testimony so she invited her friend into a healing place her friend came to a healing place and little did we know that she's not a Christian. So yesterday, her friend became a Christian in Healing Place. And she got filled with the Holy Spirit yesterday in Healing Place. Come on. So God is just doing amazing stuff through people that we... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Isn't God good and gracious and just... Yeah. So anyway, we were praying for someone else yesterday. And... Um, we were just ministering to him, and um, Anne Hughes is part of our team. Her phone kept going off, like beep, 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 <laughs> and she couldn't, it was one of those phones. No one knew we had to turn it off, it uh, must be an Android or something, probably. <laughs> I don't know, but it kept going off. So I kind of thought, Holy Spirit, what are you saying? What are you doing? Nikki, Nikki's um, thing is everything spiritual, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, so... It was to turn off the sounds that are coming around, either it, that people have spoken to you or that are in your head and you put in your own head. Because we do make conversations up in our own head <laughs> that are completely untrue. So it was to turn off that. So we just, it was great. It was, I, I felt great about it. But I just want to bring this scripture to you. So this is from the Passion Translation. It says, keep your thoughts continually continually fixed on all that is authentic and real honourable and admirable beautiful and respectful pure and holy merciful and kind and fasten your thoughts on every glorious work of God that's just, like, that's just awesome praising him always Come on, put into practice the example of all that have heard from me, that's Paul the Apostle speaking, or seen in my life, and the God of peace will be with you in all things. That is just, it's, it's, it's too good to be true, isn't it? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It is, the gospel is so simple and we're just complicated by bringing in and thinking about other things, but we just need to just focus on him and that's it and just guard our hearts and minds yeah so come on let's worship because we're going to sing about a beautiful god dave lovely to see you mate <laughs> yeah we're going to sing about a beautiful god let's stand let's worship jesus and i think the eagle has landed hasn't she chloe has landed she's in bethel she's probably asleep Although she might be watching online. You never know. Um, so that's good. So do you all know that she's arrived? Okay.
Hallelujah. We give you praise. We give you glory. You open my eyes to the wonders of you. You captured my heart with this love. There's nothing on earth is as beautiful as you. You open my eyes to your wonders of you. It's beautiful as you. You open my eyes to the wonders of you. You captured my heart with this love. There's nothing on earth that's as beautiful as you. Jesus, nothing on earth is as beautiful. description. You're too marvelous for words. Oh, we worship you, Jesus. Yeah. Beautiful Savior. Glorious King. We give you praise. We give you praise. Hallelujah. We're going to take up our tithes and our offerings. And uh, if you're online, you should get an opportunity online to give. If you're in the room, we're still passing the offering bag round. Whoop, whoop. And uh, we uh, appreciate your support and your giving. But we have to remember that our giving is part of our worship. We give of our worship. We give of our praise. But also we give of our resources that God has blessed us with. And so the Lord bless you this morning as we continue in our worship. And we do giving as part of that worship this morning. You are love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken. You give life, you are
circumstance of our life, good or bad, even ugly. Lord, we declare your goodness. We declare your purposes. We declare your hand of blessing over everything. You are worthy to receive all honor and glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Take your seat. God's good. Amen. And uh, we're a family. Yes. aren't we and uh, we are the family of God and, and I was so thrilled to get a text this week from Jax who is our, who, who is our most recent local neighbour uh, just behind here with John in the, chur- uh, in the uh, road behind the church and uh, she shared with me that she wanted to bring testimony and share something exciting. And I'm, I'm so excited about this. And uh, we just what we want to do is we want to be open to what the Spirit of God is saying to his church today, don't we? Yeah. Do you? Do you? Yeah. Yeah. 
I'm God's enforcer. <laughs> so we really want what God's got for us today, don't we? We want to hear from the voice of God from the throne room of heaven. And we're always excited when people have got to bring testimony and, and, and exciting things that are going on in people's lives. So Jax, come on, let's give her a big clap. It's not easy. Come and, come and share. And yeah, I love it. feel a bit awkward speaking on a mic. Anyway, hi everyone. Um, so, um, I really don't really, I, I'm going to tell you what happened, but I'm still processing what happened, because there's so many things God is, it's just changed my heart. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so, about a year ago, um, John gave me this mug. <coughs> it's actually a Jesus mug, but I didn't really like it. <laughs> because it doesn't look like a Jesus mug, but it is a Jesus mug. It says um, here at the front, it says full cup coffee house. And then it says, whoever drinks the water I give, he, I give him will never thirst. And it says Jesus. Now, the reason why I didn't like the mug initially it's quite thick, and I like bone china mugs, and so when I drink, I spilled, because I never sit upright in bed. So it was like all on my chest, and I said, lovey, thank you for the mug, but it's uncomfortable. So anyway, 10 days ago, we moved to Painton. Simon helped us, and for those who offered to help, um, thank you, but Simon and John did a fantastic job. Anyway, but so... John starts bringing me tea in this mug in the morning, and all of a sudden, I'm not bothered. Well, you know, I just drink from it. I don't say I don't like it anymore. And then what happened on Friday? Now, before I say anything, I'm not the sort of person... Listen, we've been through a tough time. We... Oh, sorry. We went to South Africa. It was tough. <laughs> I came back, I said to John, I love Jesus, but I'm not sure I like Christians anymore. Um, we, we were betrayed by Christians. We were conned. If I tell people what happened to us in South Africa, I think they will think I make it up. And I'm South African, and I really wasn't impressed with my own nation. So when Nikki won... Saturday, oh, well, when we first arrived, she prayed, uh, Rachel prayed for me and John, and Nikki says, oh, and darling, the Lord is going to send you back to South Africa. I wasn't polite. I said, please, I don't want to go. I don't want to go. I was quite traumatized out there. So we were very happy to be back in the UK, and look, there was a great purpose, us going to South Africa. We had to go out there to die, to South. We were... We were, I think we were quite entitled, but God sent you to a third world country and you die in a beautiful way. But it was tough and something, I don't know, I, I've not, my heart has felt contracted for a long time. I, I just felt, I'm not so sure. And then John rings me and says, I found this lovely church in Painton. I really like it. I think you like it too. And I'm like, oh, you know what? I'm not ready to quite trust people at the moment. I, it will be me and Jesus and you and me and Jesus. And, you know, so I'm a bit, you know, a bit like this. I know I'm not living to the full, but I'm not going to let Jesus go. Anyway, back to the story. So on Friday morning, John, John is doing driving, um, jobs for driver hire here in Painton and we late so he literally brings me tea in this cup and he has to be a driver hire for 7 30 and um he says to me so he brings me the cup of tea I said what is the time and he says 20 past seven I said okay and I make a point and say, I need my caffeine, so I'm drinking the tea. Do, 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 do. He's getting dressed, I'm getting dressed. I didn't really get dressed. I put my snood on, put shoes on, and I'm now driving him, and I'm dropping him to drive a hire. So I drive back to our lovely bungalow, 
And this is the thing. And whether you believe me or not, it's true. It is what happened. Um, <laughs> I, walk, I walk into the room and there is a cup of tea in the same mug. And the steam is coming from it. I know I didn't make that cup of tea. There wasn't enough time. He brought me a cup of tea. Doo -doo -doo -doo. I drank it. So I'm thinking, okay, I'm not sure what is going on, but um, I'm not asking God to make me cups of tea. I'm not. <laughs> I Look, the angels consistently bring my wallet and my keys back to me. I'm used to that. You know, not to say it's a miracle, but I'm used to it. Or he opens my eyes, whatever. So I text John and I said, hi, lovey, have you made me a second cup of tea? And he said, no, we didn't have time. So I walk into the room and the Lord made me a cup of tea. Like, like that is just, my, I mean, honestly, the steam was coming out, everything. But now I'm like, yeah, I know. <laughs> and I'm like, and then Rachel came in. I had a great day. I was so productive, you know. And um, <laughs> anyway, but. I think one of the things I suffer from, and I think God's now, because of this cup of tea, has done something. I have a really overactive mind. I don't know if it's because I'm a woman um, or whatever, but I'm constantly thinking. And we've been going through some stuff at work, and then I'm constantly thinking, 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 and I'm thinking, I want to say this to that person because they're out of order. You know, if I had to I have to amplify my thoughts over a speaker, you will all be shocked. It's, you know, I'm just always thinking, thinking, thinking. Anyway, so now I take this mug. I thought, okay, I'll be very spiritual and go and sit in the chair where John has his quiet time every morning. And all of a sudden, I just experience, I want to call it peace, but it's not, it is peace, but it's not peace. I had a still mind for the first time in how many years? Completely still, like nothing is running around my head or anything or anything or anything or anything and um so i'm noticing the garden i say thank you lord beautiful garden and then i notice this amazing tree there in the distance with birds and didn't last long actually i have to be honest i didn't get goosebumps but it was amazing stillness just complete stillness but what has happened for me as a result is that i feel different and you know what, guys, we often think is, and, and look, don't get me wrong, it's good to spend time with God. It's good. I'm married to a person who's in the secret place, intimacy. That's all John will always talk about. So when I don't have as many quiet times, I kind of beat myself up and I, um, I have this, and I, I've gotten used to it. I constantly walk around with this, nagging guilt in my heart because like you know jack you should really do more you should really spend more time with god you know you know you're not really reading the word enough you know da, da, da. and this is how it's been for me since coming back to the uk and but you know what it's not about who we are it's about who he is and he is saying to me jack i see you um, it's not because of your performance, your works, um, whether you, your heart is expanded or contracted, or because you are this holy Christian. I try. Again, I try. And I just sat in the chair and I said, thank you, Lord. I said, you know what, Lord, I can't change myself, but you can. But since Jesus has made me a cup of tea... I'm preaching in my head. I have all of a sudden, this well has opened up. And instead of this racing mind and thinking about stuff that's really not important, all of a sudden, I'm thinking about more about the Lord. I'm thinking about, yeah, all the stuff that they say, focus on that which is lovely, marvelous, blah, 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 blah. And then Rachel flew in. That blessed me. I love it when people don't make arrangements. They must just come in. I, that's me. 
and that blessed me and I had a lovely session in the garden. But Jesus made me a cup of tea and it's not just about the cup of tea. I feel, and the other thing, sorry Paul, I just need to say this, is that, you know, well, you can go through a season, and like I said, South Africa was about dying. And I don't know if this will mean anything to anybody this morning, but, you know, I got so used to dying, to self, and losses. We really suffered a lot of losses as well. But I felt God said to me, um, read up about the, the seed that dies. And it's in John 12, 24 to 26, where it says, Very truly I tell you, <clears throat> Unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. And I'm thinking, and I felt God said to me, okay, Jacques, we're always going to die to self. I'm not disputing that. But he says, I'm resurrecting you now. And so I want to give glory to God. Um, I thank you for the supernatural <laughs> cup of tea. I know I do live, I, I don't, John, it's a love language for me. I don't really, he makes my tea in the morning. He makes me two cups of tea. I don't really do tea in the morning. He does it. And, but anyway, and it was the perfect temperature. So I, and in all my 46 years on the earth, I've never contacted a pastor to say, I want to testify. But I thought, Oh, this is too good to, to pass. <laughs> Just pray more of whatever God's doing. We love it. Signs and wonders. Signs and wonders. Cups of tea. Whatever it is. We need to be noticing what God is doing in our lives. Amen. Let's not be ignorant to spiritual things. Let us be open to the supernatural works of Christ in our lives. We're going to sing another song. We're going to worship the Lord a little bit more. Then we're going to come round the word. Come on, let's worship. Let's worship some more. Let's stand to our feet. Let's magnify the name of the Lord.
There's no Sunday school this morning. Um, the the uh, Caitlin's uh, not here, and uh, she's not well, and uh, so we apologise for that. And the kids are free to just play at the back, not on the pool table with the balls. Tend to be quite normy, no, no, uh, 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 noisy, don't they? Uh, but uh, yeah, hallelujah. Uh, Sean's not here. As you can tell, uh, because she decided, well, she she wanted to come, obviously, to send Chloe off on the plane yesterday. So we were up at six and straight up to London and uh, and uh, dropped her off. And we didn't go out on the town. 
We didn't go partying. We didn't go and see a show. We just came straight back. Uh, we were back by two o'clock in the afternoon and uh, cost a fortune, let me tell you, with the ULEZ and... Uh, and the, yeah, there you go, brother. And parking, you don't you don't know till you know. And when you consider, I went to the embassy on Tuesday, as well, yeah, the U.S. embassy with her, and uh, I said it will be a couple of days, and then uh, there you go, here it comes, couple of days, and then came on Friday. She got on a plane Saturday. She gone, and uh, she's already had her first Chick Fil A, and. Uh, yeah, uh, that's apparently that's the most important thing, is food. I don't know where she gets that from. But uh, anyway, I'm going to have to put that in my ear because I can't hear myself. Uh, and I'll just keep blowing my voice out and I can't be doing with that. So, the... Um, yeah, so that's that. Um, I'd just like to pray for uh, Sean, obviously. I'd like to pray for Julie. Julie's uh, contracted uh, COVID, so we need to pray for Julie. She's not with us this morning. And uh, this, you know, we need to keep praying for, for people who are sick within the fellowship. We need to keep praying that God will uh, 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 heal, restore, deliver, bring to full health. Uh, our family amen and uh, it's not just about praying for uh, visitors and praying for people who want to use healing place but also for the family okay so that's better I can hear myself so uh, thank you Matt for that the um, so Lord we just we just lift up Julie Lord we just pray Father you would uh, uh, just uh, uh, cause uh, her symptoms to be light and easy we pray Father God that you'll bring her through it quickly that she'll test negative very quickly Lord we pray in Jesus name and we also lift up Sean we pray Father that you will just uh, do whatever it is you need to do in her body Lord to bring her back to full health Lord we pray in Jesus Jesus name. Amen. Amen. So uh, continue to pray for Chloe uh, during the course of these eight months was nine now eight um, uh, while she's away. And uh, if you want to financially support her, then I'm sure she's got links on her posts because she'll be more organized than her brothers. And you can just click those and uh, and uh, support her. As she's out there she uh, uh, is really excited to see what God is going to do and it's her first time in America so you know there's a lot of comfort that comes you know when you send Caleb, uh, Caleb the other year we sent Caleb and um, it was nerve-wracking you know we knew we were sending him to our family you know we're all Christians we're all the Church of Jesus Christ so we knew we were sending him to the family uh, 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 but it was different to sending your daughter when your brother when her brother's there to greet her and look after her because you feel like to some degree um, she's going to be well looked after we hope and uh yeah, and uh, they're staying in an apartment this weekend together in Reading with friends uh, and settling in. Then she's in some other accommodation for a week with another friend while she uh, does some viewings of where she's going to be living. Caleb, he's still sofa surfing and uh, saving money as he goes, as he does, you know. He, yeah, he's, yeah. I don't know what I've done. I don't know what I've done to them, <laughs> but uh, they live like hobos, you know. Uh, K K Caleb and Elliot actually, and I never, never saw it with Caleb coming, but he, he, he just, he's just happy. He's just a happy guy, you know. And uh, they had a lovely day yesterday. Well, three o'clock in the afternoon, she flew in their time, and then spent the day in San Francisco doing all the sightseeing of princess diaries and stuff that I don't understand. Okay, so there you go. That's a little update for you. Um, hopefully this week will be a bit quieter in my life and uh, can get back to some sort of normality. Um, I want to talk to you about repent, believe, change your life. And I know it's a really simplistic sort of title and it's one of those titles that could switch so many Christians off 
because they don't feel like they need to repent because they did that, didn't they? When they gave to their life to Jesus, they don't need to repent. You know, they did it. It's a salvation thing. And, and, and that's a lie of the enemy. That is such a complete, you know, crock. It's unbelievable. And if you, if you, if you believe that stuff, um, you need help. Because following Jesus is, is not just a daily decision. It's a moment by moment decision. Uh, and so we're on this mission of family on mission. And we're on this creating a discipleship. Uh, this, is, this is my series up until we go to the States at the end of this month to uh, do the, the original holiday. You know, to do the original uh, thing that we tried to do. It might be a couple of years ago now. I don't know. And uh, so this is what I'm running with until I leave. And then there'll be a, a group of different people speaking while I'm away on whatever they want to speak on. So you'll, get, you'll be off family on mission because they'll be able to speak on whatever they want to speak on. And then the first weekend I'm back, Rachel's going to preach again. So she'll be preaching twice. And because uh, she's got a lot to say. She's got a lot to say. And a book, a book, a book of messages is, is full and brimming. So she'll be speaking twice and she's doing the week when I get back. So I won't be speaking that week. You might want me to speak because when I get back off holidays, I'm usually fired up, raring to go with new like inspiration. But you're not getting that. And then the week after that, after Rachel's week, we are entering December, would you believe? Don't forget about the J. John event that is going on book yourselves in take friends uh, and uh, and then uh, we'll be into um, December and so I've got a little like mini series something nice I'm gonna get all Christmassy uh, really early uh, and just do some you know uh, nice Christmas messages leading into Christmas and I haven't really full fully it feels like this is faded off again this mic just feels like it's faded out again don't know if it has but is it gone quieter I feel like I'm straining again I don't know maybe it's me maybe you just oh there it is it's back again there you go, I'm not straining. There you go, you see. So anyway, it's not just me. Uh, uh, anyway, let me, just, um, let me just try and keep on track. So we're going to do that. and then. So now I'm preparing ministry for the new year. Okay, I've never been this organized. I already know what I'm speaking to you about in 2025. I've never been in that position in my life. It's ridiculous. And it means that I get to enjoy the process of bringing each message to you each week because God's doing just as much a work in me. Oh, he's got so much more work to do in me than he has in you, really. That's the way I feel. That's the way I feel, you know. He's got so much more work to do in me than you, you know. And, uh, yeah, so that's the journey we're on. And, uh, and then in, in, in 2024, we're going to have, a di uh, once a month, we're going to have one of our other team members speak as well uh, on a monthly basis, just to break it up a little bit more. Um, but we're not leaving the subject of family on mission. That's, that's just done now. We're, we're, we're committed to becoming a stronger, more reflective of God's scriptures type family of what Jesus really died for and intended to, uh, uh, to see uh, in the idea of the ecclesia, the church, the body of Christ. So, uh, so, so far we've spent some time looking at the Jesus model of discipleship. And we're unpacking further some of what Jesus modeled for us in the area of discipling his family. Jesus had a family. He had an oikos, which is the Greek word for household family. He had an oikos and they were, there was 12 of them. And the disciples were invested into by Jesus not on a weekly basis not on a Sunday and then a Bible study in the midweek he was discipled every he was discipling people every single day and in particularly most of his time and ministry went into the 12 disciples that were around him and with him wherever he went and this is um 
this process that we're on, this Jesus model that we're beginning to just sort of unpack as I suppose we, we see it, that this is included understanding the importance of invitation, which is family, and challenge, which is where the growth really comes. So invitation and challenge. You'll remember that I spoke to you about that a few week, weeks ago. Invitation and challenge to ensure we develop a discipling culture, not a complacent culture, not a cozy culture, not a stressed out culture, but a healthy, growing culture as a church family where people can grow and become all that they can be in Christ Jesus. And last week, we started to look at how we disciple, um, and we highlighted the five capitals of life. Do you remember them? Do you remember the five capitals of life? We're talking about the, the intellect. We're talking about our spirit. We're talking about our physical body. We're talking about our finances. And we're talking about our relationships. The five capitals of life. And we looked at the, the shrewd servant, which was not, is, is not always a great example of, of great Christianity, is it? But it was, it was to Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. It was to Jesus. Uh, and so if you've missed that message and now you're intrigued how Paul thinks that's awesome... Go and listen to the message. But we looked at how he managed the five capitals of life in order to ensure that he had a future beyond him losing his employment. And uh, he, God desires to disciple those five capitals in our life. He wants to, and, and I'm going to do it again, he wants to be part of life, my life so much so that when I'm stood at the McDonald's counter, he has an opinion. That's the simple version of that long story. He has an opinion on what I'm ordering or if I'm ordering. Because if I'm giving over my finances to him, he gets to say. If I'm giving over my belly, body, not belly, body, to him, he has a say. He's got, he's got an opinion. Just don't, I don't like the opinion sometimes. But isn't that true? Sometimes we don't like what God's saying to us. You know, and we always focus on the Christianese stuff, don't we? You know, like God's called me to do this. I don't like it. But then... McDonald's is just like it's a bit too far for some people it's just like really are you that are you that crazy about Jesus yes I think we should be yeah. I mean I know when you've got kids in the car I remember it they're screaming to go to McDonald's you've got to go to McDonald's you know Jesus knows <laughs> just for your sanity intellect just for your mind but hey let's not get too bogged down in McDonald's because you know where I'll end up on the way home and I'm determined not to he wants to change the way we see and interact with the moments of our life because everything is spiritual everything is discipleship from a supernatural mug of tea steaming ready for action you know we can so eat brilliant Oh, so so in, in, in line with, I mean, what Simon opened up with this morning, what you said and spoke, but also what I'm talking about in the Kairos moments. It would be so easy for us to go, oh, that's weird. That's weird. A cup of tea. That's weird. We didn't, we didn't put that there. That's weird. And we move on with our lives. Because this is the issue. We're going along our lives and something happens. And there's a decision. Do we enter into what God is doing and saying? Do we, do we acknowledge that kairos moment in the chronos of time? Do we acknowledge that kairos moment and saying, okay, what are you saying? What are you doing? Because when we stop and we say, this is not, you know, this, if everything is spiritual, then this 
That and the other is a God moment. And we have to say, what are you saying? What are you doing? Where are you leading me into? What are you trying to do in my life? What are you trying to change? Why are you trying to get my attention? These are happening all the time because nothing is normal anymore. Everything is spiritual. So everything is about your development and growth. Even the bad stuff. The hard stuff. The difficult stuff. God doesn't cause these things, but he allows these things to see how we're going to respond. What are we going to do? Are we going to ask him? What are you saying? What are you doing? I remember when John Thorngate, not, not John Thorngate, John Stewart, sorry John. John Stewart was running around doing the bus run around the estate and he broke his leg. And he was in hospital and he was in a bad way, and I think he may have even had surgery on it, and he was in a bad way, and I went in to see him, and he was there with his good news Bible at his bedside, and he started to talk to me about, well, I just, I just think the Lord's just got me here. He's just brought me here for a reason, and I'm just waiting to see that reason. And he's, he stopped me in my tracks, literally. Do you understand? And... He must have done that for a reason. He's getting my attention. He's drawing me closer to him. What a way to think. He's not thinking negatively, but he knows that God's going to work all things for the good of those who love him. And he knew that he loved him. And loves him, like in real time now. Or eternal time now. So remember, a disciple is, living a, is learning to live the way of Jesus in your context, in that moment, moment by moment. Mark 1, 14 to 15 says, After John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, Kairos. The time has come. It's a Kairos moment. The Greek word for a God moment. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. When Jesus and his disciples would teach people to live the way God intends them to live, they would finish off or start by saying, repent, believe. It's all over the scriptures. True change in life comes from repentance. But do you really know what repentance means? Do you really understand? Because my understanding was, was always tears at the altar, pouring out your heart to God, remorse over sin. But actually, if all we do is cry over the sins we've committed under the conviction of the Holy Spirit and then leave the place and carry on as nothing's changed, we've repented nothing. Nothing. And this is why repent and believe go hand in hand. Because there are two elements to repentance, if you like. There's a repent and there's a believe. There's a turning from and there is a turning to. This is how we understand repentance. There is a turning from sin, yes, and turning towards the life of God. But a lot of people, it's like an insurance policy at their point of salvation. They turn from sin, but they don't really turn from sin. They're remorseful and they repent and they say sorry and they ask God to forgive them. So they've got their ticket to heaven. But they don't live into anything new, fresh from the Holy Spirit. But then every day, as a Christian, am I listening to those Kairos moments, seeing what God is doing in my life and saying, Lord, what are you saying? What are you doing? How are you leading? What, how do you want me to respond? What do you want me to do? Because repentance is changing the way we think. And I'll go step, a step further and say, it's not just about changing the way we think. It's about changing the way we believe. Repent. Believe. Discipleship is making disciples. 
So discipleship and making disciples is about turning away from sin and towards God. To turn from the pattern of this world and the trappings of this world and turning towards being renewed in our minds, in our emotions, in our will, in our body, in our finances and in taking on the mind of Christ. That's what it is. So how do we do this? Well, this... (laughs) How do we do this? There's just no quick fix. It's the daily, moment by moment, decision to choose him in those Kairos moments. How do we do this? There's no quick fix. But through consistent, committed, habitual behavior, we can become more like Christ. In other words, habitual, nobody likes habits, do they? They always think negatively about disciplines and habits. But the reality is that if we live with the simplicity and yet the significance of responding to everything with the simple thing of Holy Spirit, this is the invitation for the Christian. Holy Spirit, what are you saying? What are you doing? I'm going to drive you mad. With this stuff. We're going to go on for years like this. Holy Spirit, what are you saying? What are you doing? Who, who else do we care about? Whose opinion do we care most about? Who, 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 who's the most significant person in, in your life? It's Jesus. Holy Spirit, what are you saying? What are you doing? It's the most important thing. thing person. Everything. He's everything. This is what it means. And, and, and it's consistently... And uh, habitually say, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, <laughs> Holy Spirit. Wow. I, I, I think it's life changing. Well, I know it's life changing. I know you just, don't, you just can't live the same anymore. And it's not just about, you know, prayer in the chair, you know. And it's not about Bible reading at a certain time every day. Oh, devastating. Because we got up at six yesterday. (laughs) I lost my Bible streak on the Bible app. Uh, Trauma. And I thought, I need deliverance from that Bible app. Because I lost all my streaks. (laughs) I lay in bed this morning and I looked and I was like, oh, I've lost my streak. And I I don't even want to, you know tell you how many I had on my streak but hey seriously this it's a bit more than that yeah. it's a bit more than that walking with Jesus is a conversation that is continual and prayer is a conversation that is continual like the apostle Paul says pray continually pray continually so we need to understand that the invitation of Christ is Christ likeness through that discipline of just being in relationship with Him all the time and looking, looking, looking at everything, not looking for those distinctive moments. We're going beyond that now. Those, those clear moments, God speaking. It starts there, but eventually we get to a place where we see everything as spiritual. And we start responding to it in that way. What is he saying? What is he doing? Holy Spirit, what are you saying? What are you doing? In fact, just asking him every moment by moment in life. In childlike, it just seems too simple, Paul. It just seems like... You're banging on about the same thing over and over and over and over again. Do you know what? I sat with a group of pastors this week and I told them my secret source at the moment. Do you know what my secret source is? What are you saying? What are you doing? And I was just, it's profound. And they began to interject and talk about that. And we talked together about that. How we've complicated it and made it something that it doesn't have to ought to be. And they use different terminologies about different things that God is saying to our church. We know God's on the move. We know God's doing something. One of them used the term rewilding. Rewilding. Oh, that sounds wild. Rewilding. 
You know, getting back to the original, that wild church that most of us would be offended in. And that's just by the Apostle Paul. It's crazy. You know, you know, it's easy, you know, in church to prophesy over people, especially prophets, so many prophets in this church, they're coming out of our ears. But the thing is, is that it's so easy to prophesy in church, isn't it? Because it's probably not going to be for you. But how are you doing prophesying to yourself? How are you doing listening to his voice for yourself and responding in the moments? That's what we need. How are we, how are we, as we heard from Rachel the other week, great testimonies because, you know, it does offer my preaching, doesn't it? So it's like how we heard from Rachel about the housing crisis and, 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 and facing that, that obstacle and that problem and how she navigated that in that spiritual moment day by day and just stood strong and confident in the Lord that he got this situation so how are we after prophesying on it I'm using prophecy because there's so many of you so how, how many you know uh, or healing you know healing you know uh, what about your healing do you know what I mean and it's like we pro- we're, we're prophesying on the Sunday but then when the unexpected bill hits the mat on a Monday Then the job gets cut on the Tuesday and they cut my benefits on the Wednesday and it starts sounding like a Craig David song. What about when God points his finger and touches a habit that maybe nobody knows about? An unhealthy habit that the enemy's got you locked into but nobody else knows about. And he starts to prod and poke into that in your life and saying, why are you not giving me that? Why are you not seeing that as a spiritual thing? Or when in that moment you're out and about and God tells you, you feel the prompting of the Holy Spirit to pray for someone. How you work and do and have your being in that moment. There's daily Kairos invitations, Kairos moments, God moments, Holy Spirit interruptions. Kairos is, is that word that refers to that moment in time. And we use it to mark the unique moments where God interrupts and invites us to change. He invites us to change. It might be a failure in our lives that we need to respond to. It might be a challenge that disorientates us or simply learning something that we didn't know before. We remember God doesn't cause bad things but we know that God uses bad things and it could be and should be Holy Spirit moments that require a response but many of us continue on our way as business as usual business as usual that 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 um those those things where (laughs) those things where you know it could be and should be a holy spirit moment that require a response but many of us continue on our way as usual falling into the well-trodden roads of panic, hibernation, ignoring it, ignoring him, worrying, all those well-trodden, you know, the, the, the um, I think Freedom in Christ talks about the tracks of the Land Rover in our brain, that they, you just don't even need to hold the steering wheel, those, they're so grooved into the, the farmer's field that you just don't, it'll just drive itself, because the you know, you feel a little bit like that in the slow lane. That's why I'm never in the slow lane very often on the motorway. Not because I speed. No, no, no. <laughs> but the, the, I don't go in the slow lane too much because there are, there are grooves. You can feel the steering wheel being pulled around by the lorry, heavyweight lorries putting grooves. Even on a motorway, you can't really see them, but they're there. And in our minds, we tend to go the same way every time something happens. 
We tend to do the same thing. We're in this pattern of behavior. And it's the easiest thing for us to do. And it's well, it's, it's, that's what a well-trodden road looks like. But it's time to make new patterns. Pattern not of this world, but a pattern of his world. His truth. And so we need to fight default activity. The reality is that your system is perfectly designed to get you the results you've already been getting. It's perfect. It's going to produce the goods every single time. Because it's the same way, it's the same response, it's the same reaction, it's the same stuff you do over and over again. And you've been doing it over and over and over again. God's been trying to get your attention. He's trying to get your attention. And you just keep responding in the same old way. Do, 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 do. With no turn. No change. Yeah, I'll go to church 180. I'll go to church 180. But I don't turn my life around. I don't change. I just keep going the same way I've been going. Yes, he's in my heart. Yes, I love him. Yes, I pray when I need something. You get me? And we just keep going. God's like this going, hello. And you're like, I'm still going. Du, du, du. And he's like, hello. You're like, huh, huh, huh. There has to be a stop. There has to be a break. And there has to be a turning around. Where we start to walk into some new belief. Some new truth. Some new destiny in Jesus Christ. I've got to change. And so everything's perfectly designed to give you the results you've been getting because they're habitual. Oh, I could never, I could never make good habits in my life. Well, you've already made bad ones. You've got them down. How many people this morning? Maybe this might be a public shaming. I don't know what your disciplines are like. How many people got out of bed this morning, went to the bathroom, and brushed your teeth? How, how, how many people got up this morning and made a cup of tea or coffee? All right, got a few more responses then. I just, I just pray right now for a, a fresh breath of heaven over these manky teeth in Jesus' name. Seriously, brush your teeth. There is no condemnation for those that believe, but there are. There is condemnation when you're breathing your bad breath everywhere. <laughs> Rebuke that in Jesus' name. Come out. Listen, you, you, you've got habits already. You formed them. They're there. They're good habits, brushing teeth. They're good habits, showering. I know you get, we're not even getting on how many times you shower. Okay, I'm not going to touch it, the Holy Grail. But I shower every day, okay? I shower every day. And I put on, when I got married, my wife taught me. I do not smell, right? I promise you, I can pass the sniff test right now, okay? Oh, look at them guns. Anyway, the, the, I can pass the sniff. You know, my, my kids, like, they're, just like, they're just like, they know I don't smell. You know, it's weird if I smell, okay? And I can sweat, and I still just don't smell, right? But when I first got married, I used to, I used to, like, shh, shh. I'm not telling anybody to shush, by the way. I'm just going, shh, shh. Okay? But when I, when I met Sean and we got married, right, uh, she taught me that that wasn't enough. Now, I'm still, I do not smell, right? My armpits very rarely smell. And I've been around, you know, playing football when I was younger, not now, and uh, exercising. And people stink, man. They stink when they're exercising. But I just, I just don't smell. It's always wrong with me. But I just don't smell. I smell awesome. But the thing is this, right, is that she taught me that you got to put the roll-on first, antiperspirant roll-on, and then spray the deodorant over the top. Now, I don't smell, but now I really smell good because I've started a new habit. I'm 25 years in now, married life. You know? I guess what I'm still doing? Putting on the roll on, 
spraying the deodorant. It's a habit. I, I got myself into a new habit. And uh, you can do it too. You can do it by just saying, Holy Spirit. I heard Paul wax eloquent at the front, maybe not so eloquent. And I, I'm just going to try it. What are you doing here? What are you doing there? What do you want me to say to that person? What do you want me to say to that person? How do you, how, how do you want me to react to that situation? How do you want me to react to this person? And you start to create a new heavenly habit that has the power to transfer your mind into Christ-like thinking. He's already done everything he needs to do. His divine power, sorry for the slides this morning, but I did them all. I had them prepped, but I didn't transfer them off my computer onto the flash pen. Okay, so one, uh, 2 Peter 1 verse 3 says, His divine power has given us everything we need to brush our teeth in the morning, to put on two lots of smelly stuff under our arms. He's given us all the power we need to be able to cast out demons, to raise the dead. He's, he's given us everything we need to do the normal, if you want to use that word, and the extraordinary stuff, the things of the kingdom. He's done, given his divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through the knowledge, our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Ephesians 1 verse 3. Praise be to the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us in the heavenly realms. And I'm in the heavenly realms. I don't know about you. You can choose where you want to be. But I'm in the heavenly realms who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. I've already got it. I'm already there. I'm not waiting for it. Romans 8 32. He who did not spare his own son but gave him up for us all how will he also sorry how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things I've got it all I can do this I can do this what Paul what 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 can you do I can turn from this direction in the moment that God gives me and turn into his direction that he's getting my attention I can respond with an open heart open mind open life and say Holy Spirit what are you saying what are you doing and I don't want to devalue that by keeping on saying it because it's profound but I just want you to start doing it in your everyday life because that's what Jesus wants that's what discipleship looks like and we have to be a people that hear him we have to be a people who hear him and respond to him we have to be a people who give it all to him not just on Sunday not just in front of Christians not just is this the right thing to do or say we do it because we love him and we want to through repentance from and believing into what God is saying and what God is doing and how he wants us to respond to his leading. After all, 99% obedience is 100% disobedience. We have to learn to do this as a family together and so that means there's moments where you'll be asked what has he been saying to you what has he been doing in your life where has he been trying to get your attention this week where maybe you just carried on so that we can come back to it respond to it and that's what we'll do next week. And so as a family, each and every moment in life is a spiritual experience that God invites us to take the challenge of change through the gift of repentance, changing our thinking towards believing his truth. What are you saying? What are you doing? Let's stand to our feet.
in closing this morning. You know, I have songs lined up to sing. I have prayers to pray at the end. <laughs> but how can someone talk to you about... What is he saying? What is he doing without asking you right now? What is he saying? What is he doing? So let's just take a moment. We thank everyone for joining us online in the cyber universe. We thank you for joining us. God bless you. Have a great week. Um, yeah, we pray for them. Lord, we just pray that right where they are, they will begin to ask Holy Spirit, what, you, what are you saying? What are you doing? In their crisis, in their problems, in their happy times, in their celebration and jubilation, I pray they will be asking, what are you saying? What are you doing? Every day, every moment, responding to your kairos, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you online. So, in the room... <laughs> Maybe not. So I might get told off. He likes to carry on recording. Um, Holy Spirit, what? Are you, just, just let's wait on the Lord right now. What are you saying? What are you doing? We've heard out the coffee. Uh, sorry, a tea mug is full and hot. And for some of you, that might just stretch you, stretch you somewhat. <laughs> it might just, you may be dealing with a little bit of disbelief. Suspicion might be invading your mind. You know, maybe, maybe one of them made that cup of tea and just forgot. You know? Maybe, maybe it's just a freak occurrence. There is alien life out there. We rebuke those thoughts in Jesus' name and we say yes. Yes to your Kairos moment, Lord. Yes to more supernatural occurrences across our church family. Woe betide you if you're ignoring those supernatural things and not testifying to God's goodness, miraculous power at work. We overcame, we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Come on, Jesus is moving. Jesus is moving. Shh. So what is he saying? Now I'm going to invite you to share what is he saying what is he doing what is he saying what is he doing you know we can look to the Middle East right now and see what's going on over in the Middle East I pray that there will be people over there that will be asking what are you saying what are you doing in this time we can all get you know, end timey and ooh, excitable. But there's people, people's lives suffering, both sides, people's lives suffering. What are you saying, Holy Spirit? What are you? Doing? Pray for people that are listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit in the government, Lord, out in Israel. Holy Spirit, what are you saying? What are you doing? In Jesus' name. Okay, so here in this room, what is he saying? There's a microphone here. What is he saying? What is he doing? Some of you will have had a picture. Some of you have had a word. Some of you have, <clears throat> yeah, might be specific, might not be so specific. But what is he saying? What is he doing this morning? So what I've seen this morning is, um, as Shax was talking, I'd been away on holiday actually so let's start there god provided a holiday for me and a friend this week and that in itself has been a testimony for me even being able to go um physically and mentally and financially and um when i sat down while, while i was away um 
an artist friend said to me, do you know how to watercolour, which is interesting because I've been doing that for a while, and prepare the paper before you go. So I was like, oh, right, okay. Oh, I didn't even know that. Yeah, fine. So I did. I did the um, school child blue sky green grass while I was away. And I was expecting an art piece while I was away. And it didn't happen. So I was kind of feeling a bit naff. <laughs> anyway, I sat at the back there and I felt three trees. So what I'm feeling God is saying is normally at this time of year, you look out and everything's burnt up and... But actually, I am the water, you are the oaks, you are planted, you are stronger than you think. You are um, oaks of righteousness. And I, feel, I felt particularly the roots in the ground. So you are rooted, God is around you and doing in each and every one of us way more than we think. And we are stronger than we think and our words are stronger than we think. And we are stronger than we think because we walk physically in the mental and physical where we are. But Holy Spirit doesn't see where we are. And so what I ended up doing was, interestingly, three oaks. And the seeds that Jacques was talking about to the ground. And just this almost autumnal of the, as the grass grows. But it gradually being grown by the wind set on fire. But I see, I feel equally the watering and the fire. Seen place, and I, I, um, yeah, sense that for some of you, God is doing things in the unseen place within your life, and you've been so focused on the seen place that you've neglected the unseen place with God. God wants to cause your roots to go deeper, wider, because the health of the tree, the health of your life is in the roots and where they're placed. So just, if that's for you, just receive that. And I'm, not, I'm not too worried. I'm not too, you know, I don't concern myself. You know, sometimes just in the peace and the waiting, it's just so healthy. I don't think in Pentecostal churches we do enough sitting and waiting and just in a place of peace and quiet so this is a beautiful thing isn't it because the temptation is to say oh somebody stop playing something because we all get paranoid that there's no music but it's just like it's nice just to sit and be as a family just to hear what the holy spirit is saying come on john bless you man Yeah, I was just praying and asking that particular question, and um, the scripture um, come to mind of Matthew six twenty one, where it speaks of wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart also be. And what I just felt I was saying, you know, along the themes of what you've been talking about as well, about it being in the same rut, is that sometimes we follow the desires of our heart for that also, but what our God's desires, when we start truly giving our heart over to his desires and allowing his desires to become desires of our own heart. And it's also part of coming into that transformational change is about coming into that area of saying, okay, I want to change because actually my desires need to be your desires, not my own desires anymore. I mean, even when you talk about the McDonald's story, which always makes me laugh, you know, you know, that desire of actually, you know, I want the, I want the uh, apple pie and I want the quarter. I won't go on. Okay. But anyway, you know, but it, it is about saying, okay, Lord, how do we change in that area so that our heart's desires become your desires? So I just feel that's what God's been posting to me anyway. So good. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. God, die. God, die. That seed got to die. Come on. Come on. Love it. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I find what the Lord's been saying to me lately is, because I've been praying, because I've got a bad back, and I'm like, Lord, come on, I need it healed. And um, he's been saying negative thoughts. And I thought, oh, okay, so... Like, um, he just put it in my head, you know, like, oh, I'm getting old now, I can't do this. And he said, negative thought. Mm. You know, that we, mm. we just say it sometimes and we don't realise that we're saying it. Um, so he's, you know, he's, he's really teaching me that at the moment. So 
We're going to pray. We're going to pray, Simon, Rachel, Lisa. Just come and pray for healing in the back. And, uh, yeah, renewing of the mind, Holy Spirit. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. You know, when, we, when, we, when someone gets, gets up and says, you know, I'm struggling with this physically, our instant response needs to be, let's pray. You know, let's pray. Not, oh, oh, that's just awful. Do you know what I mean? As our, our, our supernatural response should be, ooh, opportunity for a miracle. Amen? Amen. You know, it's one of the most common things, back trouble, isn't it? In, in, in the nation, in the world probably. But if anybody's got back trouble, just put your hand up very quickly. Back trouble. Yeah, just a couple of people. Just lay on John. Pray, pray for John. Pray for Brenda. Who else? Yeah, yeah, we pray for Carl in proxy. So just a couple of people, just gather around those people, pray for them. What are you saying, Holy Spirit? What are you doing? Yeah, good man. Thanks, Matt, Josh. Good. Brilliant. Well done, fellas. Yeah, hallelujah. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come in Jesus' name. We rebuke back pain. We do not accept the statistics of this world. We, we do not accept the statistics of this world over our lives. We believe we are in those heavenly realms. Jesus. We do not accept old age. <laughs> we rebuke it. Strengthen. Oh man, God bless you friends. Look, thank you. Thank you Jesus for everything that you're doing. We pray for multiplication, increase, breakthrough in Jesus name. Lord, let us be open to your your voice, your leading, your circumstances and presentation of those moments in our lives, Lord, that we get to respond to your leading in Jesus name. Amen. God bless you, friends. You can carry on praying.